Good morning, children. <coughs> Today, in phenols part two, we will discuss the chemical properties of phenols. The first reaction is reaction of phenol with alkali metal hydroxides. That is acidic nature of phenols. We have already discussed this reaction in details in our previous lecture, phenols part one. Secondly, let us discuss the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions of phenol. Phenols they readily undergoes electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions as the OH group activates the aromatic ring and directs the incoming electrophile to ortho and para positions. The ortho para directing and and the activating influence of the hydroxy group towards the electrophilic aromatic substitution can be explained. on the basis of the fact that oxygen of oh group can share more than one pair of electrons you know that oxygen we have a uh, two lone pairs of electrons so oxygen can share more than one pair of electrons with the ring due to resonance when phenol undergoes electrophilic substitution the contributing structures of the intermediate carbocation form by the attack of electrophile at various positions are as shown on the next page when electrophile attacks phenol in case of ortho attack we get four contributing structures a b c d in case of para attack again we get four contributing structures a b c and d in case of meta attack we get a b c only three contributing structure no contributing structure corresponding to structure d as we have obtained in case of ortho attack and para attack this structure d which we get in case of ortho attack and para attack is extra stable because in in this case in this structure each atom each and every atom of course except hydrogen has complete octet of electrons you know that hydrogen has only two electrons leaving behind hydrogen all other atoms have complete octet of electrons because of them these two structures which we get one each in case of ortho and para attack attains extra stability no such structure is obtained in case of meta attack the hybrid carbocation resulting from the ortho and para attack are more stable than the carbocation resulting from the meta attack thus substitution in phenol occurs mostly at ortho and para positions now let us take up some examples of electrophilic substitution reactions of phenol the very first one is halogenation phenols on treatment with aqueous solution of bromine results in the formation of 246 tribromophenol we get here the solid yellow colored uh, crystalline precipitates of 246 tribromophenol however at low temperature and in non polar solvents like carbon tetrachloride or carbon disulfide only mono product mono halo product is obtained we see, you can see here we get here orthobromophenol or para bromophenol and in fact we get a mixture of ortho and para bromophenols but only mono halo product is obtained now what happens in aqueous solution phenoxide ion is formed this phenoxide ion releases electron towards a benzene ring as a result aromatic rings gets highly activated and undergoes tri substitution but in non polar solvents phenol does not undergo ionization to an appreciable extent next electrophilic reaction is nitration phenols undergo nitration with dilute nitric acid we get a mixture of ortho and para nitropyl compounds but the yield is very poor we get only 40% of ortho isomer and only hardly 13% of para isomer even when they are treated with concentrated nitric acid phenols give us 246 trinitrophenol that is picric acid in low yield this nitration of phenol gives us poor yield of the products as beside nitration that nitric acid also oxidizes the starting compound so some of the starting phenol gets oxidized by the nitric acid that is we get lesser amount of the products whether we are uh, we are nitrating in presence of dilute nitric acid or concentrated nitric acid now next is sulfonation sulfonation 
at low temperature mainly gives us the orthoisomer whereas sulfonation at high temperature gives us the para isomer as we can see in this example sulfonation using concentrated sulfuric acid at 288 kelvin gives us orthophenol sulfonic acid and at slightly high temperature 373 kelvin with concentrated sulfuric acid we get paraphenol sulfonic acid after sulfonation let us take up friedel craft alkylation friedel craft alkylation of phenols mainly yields para isomer as shown in this reaction phenol when treated with tertiary butyl chloride in presence of hf results in the formation of para tertiary butyl phenol now after this let us take up acylation or ester formation reaction of phenol just like alcohols phenols also reacts with acid chloride and acid anhydrides and gives us esters so when phenols are converted into esters by the reaction with acid chlorides or acid anhydrides first reaction you can see phenol reacting with the acid chloride for example propanoyl chloride and we get here phenyl propanoid a uh, ester in second case phenol is reacting with acetic anhydride in presence of pyridine and we get here phenyl acetate next we have carboxylation reaction or also known as Kolbe's reaction or sometimes called as kolbeis schmidt reaction a carboxylation is the direct introduction of a carboxyl group into a aromatic compound sodium phenoxide that is sodium salt of phenol when heated with carbon dioxide at 400 kel uh, kelvin at reduced pressure of 4 to 7 atmosphere results in the formation of a sodium salt of salicylic acid now this sodium salt of salicylic acid on acidification yields us salicylic acid the mechanism of this reaction is shown here there is a attack of the uh, this carbon carbon of the carbon dioxide at the ortho position of the phenol as you can see here next we have fry's rearrangement fry's rearrangement involves heating of a phenolic ester with anhydrous aluminium chloride resulting in the migration of the acyl this is the acyl group from the phenolic oxygen to ortho or para position this reaction occurs by the mechanism as depicted outlined here the first step of mechanism involves the formation of a acylium ion this is how we get a acylium ion by the attack of the uh, phenol ester with aluminium chloride we get here the acylium ion now we, i will let you know the schemes for ortho and para attack separately this is how the ortho attack takes place acylium at ion attacks at the ortho position we get here the keto form of the product which then undergoes tautomerization to give us the intermediate in the enolic form this intermediate on hydrolysis gives us the product as you can see here the acyl group has shifted to the ortho position now in case of para attack you see here in case of para attack the react the acylium ion is uh, attacking at the para position resulting in the formation of the keto form of the product which then undergoes tautomerism to give us uh, i'm sorry just write try at add here cor group here to give us the para isomer which on hydrolysis gives us the para isomer where the acyl gift get get shifted to the para position i would like to mention here high temperature favors the ortho isomer whereas low temperature favors the para isomers as you can see here in this particular case the next section which we are going to discuss is cleansons rearrangement cleansons rearrangement involves heating an aryl allyl ether to 475 kelvin as shown here the allyl group of the ether migrates from the oxygen to the ring carbon at ortho position as you can see here so the mechanism for this reaction uh, is depicted here in this case 
here we can see the <coughs> mechanism is involved is known to be a concerted mechanism concerted means single step mechanism in which the cleavage of al allyl oxygen bond this is the cleavage of allyl oxygen bond is this is synchronized with the formation of the allyl carbon bond this allyl carbon bond formation and cleavage of allyl oxygen bond this bond cleavage and this carbon carbon bond formation uh, reaction taking place simultaneously and the group allyl group shifts to the ortho position as you can see here again this is the keto form of the product allyl ph phenol <coughs> here you see that the initial if we number these carbons as alpha beta gamma you can see initially oxygen was attached to the alpha carbon but the carbon which gets attached to the aromatic carbon that this carbon or at the ortho position is the gamma carbon of the allyl group so carbon carbon of the allyl group gets attached at the ortho position of the uh, <coughs> aromatic carbon <coughs> excuse me so we can see <coughs> ortho migration involves an inversion in the position of the substituents initially the point of attachment with the aromatic ring was through alpha carbon now point of attachment to the aromatic ring is via gamma carbon that is why we are saying that ortho migration involves an inversion in the position of the substituents in the allyl group with respect to that of the starting compound <coughs> if both the ortho positions are occupied then the allyl group shifts to the para position this we will see in our next example in this example allyl 2,6 dimethyl phenyl ether you can see both the ortho positions of the allyl ether they are occupied but if both the positions are occupied even then the reaction will take place and the allyl group will shift to the para position the mechanism is shown here actually here two migrations are taking place initially the ortho migration takes place as we have discussed earlier and the intermediate formed is this one but here the intermediate form by the ortho migration has no hydrogen at the ortho position as these two positions are occupied by alkyl groups so as there is no ortho hydrogen available at the ortho position this intermediate then undergoes another migration so this undergoes another migration to give us the final product where the allyl group now shifts to the para position so the para isomerization two migrations takes place one migration second migration one inversion second inversion so we can see two migrations or two inversions take place that is one inversion is followed by another inversion and thus we can say there is no net inversion you can see children here initially <coughs> the point of attachment of the allyl group was through alpha carbon after one migration the point of the attachment becomes through gamma carbon after second attachment now again it is going to attach at the para position via the alpha carbon which was initially the alpha carbon so again the attachment is via alpha carbon so here we get one inversion second inversion uh, again in the final product initial product had the attachment of allyl group through alpha carbon final product also has attachment of the allyl group through alpha carbon so there is no net inversion <clears throat> now we take up Gatterman's synthesis. This is a method to prepare phenolic aldehydes. You can see here we have got a phenolic aldehyde from phenols by treatment of phenol with the mixture of HCN, HCl in presence of aluminium chloride. And second step is the hydrolysis. We get here phenolic aldehydes. This reaction is an electrophilic substitution reaction where a formaldenium ion this is the formaldenium ion which we get by the reaction of SCN with SCL in presence of aluminium chloride this is the attacking species formaldenium ion which we get in the initial step now this formaldenium ion then attacks the benzene ring to give aldemine which hydrolyzes with mineral acid to get the phenol aldehyde 
I have depicted, I have shown, I have outlined the mechanism of this particular reaction. Here you can see that initially by the attack of the formaldenium ion at this is you can see the formaldenium ion is going to attack at the para position maybe due to the uh, steady crowding it attacks at the para position and initially we get here this aldimine this aldimine on hydrolysis in presence of some mineral acid these are the steps showing the hydrolysis of the aldimine form we get here phenolic aldehyde as the final product with the elimination of ammonia one molecule of ammonia and tone. <clears throat> so we can see the acid which we are using is used in the catalytic amount we have added one H ion proton and we are getting here one proton. So catalytic amount of acid, catalytic use of acid is taking place. The last reaction this chapter is your well known reamer demon reaction. I hope you have studied this reaction in your previous classes also. Let us discuss this reaction here. Treatment of phenol with chloroform in presence of aqueous sodium hydroxide at 340 Kelvin followed by hydrolysis gives us mixture of ortho, this is the major product and para isomers of para hydroxy benzaldehyde. We get here ortho benzex, uh, benz <coughs> we get here ortho hydroxy benzaldehyde and para hydroxy benzaldehyde where ortho isomer is formed in major amount and para isomer is formed in minor amount the mechanism of this reaction is shown here it is outlined over here and is believed to occur why a carbene the carbene is dichlorocarbene so initially chloroform reacts with sodium hydroxide to give us dichlorocarbene which then is attacked upon at ortho position by sodium phenoxide ion. Now we can see here. Now next step is just to get aromatic compound, just to attain aromaticity. Uh, we get here. This is simply a ketonal tautomerism. We get this dichloro compound, which on hydrolysis with the basic medium we are using here, OH ion, is giving us <coughs> here the dihydroxy compound this gem dihydroxy compound i would like to know here if two oh groups are attached on the same carbon atom such groups are known as gem dihydroxy compound thus gem dihydroxy group this is they are very very unstable immediately they loses one water molecule and gives us the aldehyde so this is how we obtain salicylaldehyde if instead of chloroform carbon tetrachloride is used in this reaction phenolic acids are formed instead of aldehyde group we get here carboxylic group and the major product in this case will be salicylic acid and para hydroxy benzoic acid as you can see here if you are using chloroform we get introduction of CHO group in the ring if we get if we have the reaction with carbon tetrachloride we have COH group in the aromatic ring so this is all about reamer diamond reaction and all about the chemical reactions of phenols which are there in your syllabus